What's up guys, Ravlar here, I hope you're having the most amazing day and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over 50 quality of life RuneScape 3 tips and tricks. Tips and tricks videos are probably what got me noticed on the YouTube scene so I really want to give back and hopefully this video does it. Initially it was meant to be 101 RuneScape 3 tips and tricks but part way through editing I realised that video would be like an hour and a half long. So there will be a part 2 so just keep an eye out for that. But anyway guys, I really hope this helps you out. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's start off by making you some free money. So if you go to Lumbridge into this building, you'll find an NPC called Explorer Jack. If you right click him and claim, he will give you some money and some rewards. Now this depends on how many area tasks you've done, and if you've not claimed from him already, the likelihood is you're going to have a few mills sitting here ready to be claimed whenever you wish. Normally, after completing a challenge, people would go to a challenge master to claim their rewards. But, all you need to do is simply go to your adventures tab, then challenges, and click claim challenge, and you can claim it from wherever you are in game. Have you ever wondered how people get some amazing cinematics of this game? Well, it's actually very easy to do. All you need to do is right click your compass and then click on free cam. Now this opens what used to be the orb of oculus and it allows you to explore the game in a way that you couldn't before and take some amazing cinematics. You can control the speed, go up and down and explore some areas which have never been explored before and this really is an amazing tool for any aspiring YouTubers out there. The RuneScape wiki is such a core part of this game and is the go-to source for any information we need about anything in regards to RuneScape. A really quick way to access the wiki without opening a browser is in-game if you do forward slash wiki and space the term you want to search for and then press enter, it will open the wiki page and search for what you searched. If you quickly want to find out the GE price of any item, even if you're far away from the bank of the GE, all you need to do is click on your money pouch, then this button, and search for the item you want, and you will have the up-to-date GE price in absolutely no time. Skyboxes and filters are an amazing way to customise the scenery of your game to exactly how you want it. Now these are particularly useful in dark areas, for example the Ripper Demon Cave, where it's hard to see what's going on. Now if you want to access this, all you need to do is right click the world icon on your screen and click skybox or filters. Now you can choose whichever one you want and it really does offer some amazing variety to gameplay. If you take an item and you have some Alc runes, or the Explorer's Ring, or a legendary pet with the High Alchemy ability active, you can actually Alc an item by dragging it to the coin pouch. Similarly, if you want to disassemble an item, all you need to do is drag it to the Invention icon. Now both of these are pretty useful when you're slaying if you don't want to have the Alchemy or the Disassembly icon on your toolbars. If you open up the Treasure Hunter icon, and click on this little settings cog over here, you'll be shown a lot of very useful options. The main ones to look at here are the fact that you can auto redeem bonus XP from prismatic stars and lamps in a pre-selected skill. So this means that every time you win a prismatic star or an XP lamp from Treasure Hunter, it will automatically go to the skill that you wanted to select it on. I would also recommend turning on all the other auto redeem options just to save you some time from clicking on money bags and dungeoneering token boxes in the future. Normally, if you've used Treasure Hunter before, you will have some oddments stored up and you can access the oddment store by going to your coin pouch and clicking on your oddments. Now every few weeks there is a 75% sale off of all prismatic medium stars. Now I highly recommend you wait until this sale is on before dumping your oddments into this because that is the best way to maximize your oddments per XP and don't use it at any other point. If you want to PM someone really quickly, but don't want to open your friends list, all you have to do is forward slash PM, space, then type the username of that person, using an underscore if they have a space in it, followed by your message, and then hit enter. If you do this, you'll send a PM to them, and you don't have to go through your friends list to look for their name. 
Another very useful feature that you can do to reply to PMs really quickly is when you get a PM, all you have to do is press tab to reply to the person. You can enter your message and then press enter and it will send. Also, if you get some embarrassing PMs you don't want to show on stream or screen, all you need to do is click this cog here and click clear chat history and it will clear all your chat history from the screen. It can be really annoying when you have some friends that change their names constantly and after a while you don't really know who they are. One really cool way around this is that if you right click someone on your friends list, you have the option to add a note to them. So as you can see here, I'm adding a note to my friend here, so even if he changes his name again and again, I know exactly who he is and you can put little reminders if you want to know exactly where you knew them from or what they're useful for, wink wink. A very useful thing in this game is adjusting the way that your camera works and you can do this by opening settings, going to gameplay and then clicking on the camera tab. Over here there are a lot of settings which really do impact your gameplay. For example, you can set zoom to a maximum distance if you so wish and you can actually choose which type of camera you want. I've personally tried all the different cameras and they are very different game experiences you get with each one. I personally prefer the Freedom Classic as it allows me to see a lot of things which is helpful for PVM. If you go to the Constitution Ability Book, you will see that there is an icon with a knife and fork on it. Now what this icon is, is a Eat Food button. Now instead of keybinding a specific food, for example like a shark, you could keybind this button instead and this will automatically eat the first food on your inventory that it sees. Now for example, I switch out different types of food for different bosses. For example, I'd use Blubbers at Virago, but I'd use Sailfish at Telos. Now with this button, I don't need to keybind a different food each time as it will automatically search for that food and eat it automatically. If you're in desperate need for some dungeoneering tokens and have some chaotics in the bank, you could destroy them and get half of your tokens back, which is pretty useful. But please note, if they are augmented, you won't get any tokens back, so if you want them back, you have to de-augment it first and then destroy the item. As using familiars such as Nihils, Ripper Demons or Water Fiends is particularly expensive nowadays, you can actually save a lot of money by using this one trick. If you're on the Lunar Spellbook and go on the Combat Spells, you will see a spell called Spiritualized Food. Now if you cast this spell on a food which is a healing above 1300 HP, your familiar duration will get extended and this really helps cut down a lot of cost in the long run. If you open your settings and click on Adventures and Minigames, you will get a list of D&Ds and minigames that you can do. Now a really cool trick is to go onto the ones that you like and then click this little star on the top right and then it will be marked as your favourite. Now what this will do is it will show a little message when that activity is about to start, meaning you will be notified as soon as you can do it and reminded if you're going to forget. If you have a lot of partly used jewellery such as Ring of Dueling, Amulet of Botanist etc etc and they're clogging up your bank, well, all you need to do is take them to Murky Matt at the GE. If you right click combine, he will combine those items, saving you a lot of space in your bank and making your life a little bit easier. A lot of people use aggression overloads these days. They're pretty nice if you want AFK as they combined overloads and aggression potions. Now one thing which I haven't seen many people do is use this item in combination with something called a potion reservoir which is made from invention. Now what this potion reservoir does is once activated it will automatically consume that potion once it runs out. Now if you use your aggro overload with a potion reservoir this is really powerful because you don't need to click on anything and all you need to do is make sure you don't log out because your character will continue to auto retaliate and will be overloaded for the whole potion as opposed to just one dose so you really don't need to concentrate at all and you can just sit back and afk. 
The ability bladed dive is pretty essential for all things that involve mobility in RuneScape. Now, if you want to make this ability even better, you can activate it and then right click and select a spot to dive to. This really does increase the accuracy of where you want to go and can be particularly useful in some PVM scenarios. Another really cool thing about bladed dive is that once you activate it, you can actually click on your minimap on the spot you want to go and you will dive to that spot as well. As we're speaking about bladed dive, this next tip may help you out if you're struggling with some keybinds. Now, as you know, bladed dive is a dual wield ability, and as a result of that, you normally need two keybinds to keybind the weapons that you wish to dive with. Now, here's a tip I got from Evil Lucario, and that is if you use Dragon Claws, you only need to equip one of them and press that button once and you'll equip both straight away. This is pretty useful for bladed dive if you so wish, because it saves you a keybind and saves you from having to press an extra button. Now, this also works with Ripper Claws if you want to augment them. Accessing foreign worlds on RuneScape can be particularly useful if you want to go to a less crowded place or go to a world which has less players in it. Now, how you do this is by closing your RuneScape client, reloading it again, but while it's on its loading screen, you want to click the settings cog, then change from English to one of the respective languages. For example, because I selected Portuguese, the next time I open up my client, it will be opened up onto Portuguese servers, which are not accessible if I was to select English, which is the default setting on my client. If you press escape, then hop worlds, it will open up this menu here, which I'm sure a lot of you use. Now, if you click on settings, you can actually see a few useful options here. You can toggle between free and members worlds, and you can also toggle between loot share worlds. But the most useful thing here, in my opinion, is the toggle world hop confirmation. Now, I uncheck this box, meaning that every time I go and click on a world, I don't get the confirmation message, which I used to find quite annoying. So hopefully this can save you some time. If you press Alt plus the tilde key, it will open up the developer options, which is pretty useful for many things. Firstly, if you type in display FPS, you will get a detailed description of your FPS and your ping on the top right. Now, this can be a bit annoying and obnoxious, so if you want to remove it, all you need to do is type in display FPS again. But if you want a smaller option, all you need to do is type in display FPS small, which will make it a lot neater if you want to have a constant view of it, but don't want it covering your screen. Speaking of the developer console, another very useful feature that this has is the ability to delete your game's cache in game. If you type in delete JS5 caches into the console, then restart your client, your cache will then have been deleted. If you go into your bank and open up the presets, a lot of people don't actually know that you can drag around the presets so they're in a different order. So for example, I can drag number six to number two and vice versa, and this makes my life a bit easier when I'm at the bank. Now something else which a lot of people don't actually know is that once you've got a preset that you like or something that you're building, you can right click the numbers on the side and override it from the bank screen. Next up with the bank, you can open it and click on this button here to get a list of filters for your bank which can be particularly useful for clearing it up. For example, if you click on the clear up filter, it will show you all the items you don't really need at all and will make it very easy for you to destroy them and get rid of them as you so wish. The other filters are also very useful for sorting things out and I highly recommend that you use this feature. I also highly recommend that you guys set up a preset which is your go-to preset. Now this preset can be very useful for quickly accessing items that you use on a daily basis. For example, I have all my familiars in here which I normally use, I have an onyx to recharge my ring of death because I die all the time, and I have a few useful teleports like the captain's log and the wicked herd combined with the runecrafting cape so I can do my daily viswax. Overall, this preset saves me a bunch of time and I highly recommend that you get one of your own. A really awesome thing that you can do with your daily and weekly tokens is to combine them to go to the next stage. For example, you can combine the daily tokens to make a weekly token, and you can combine the weekly tokens to make a monthly token. Now this is pretty nice and something that I do, so I ensure that I can go to the oyster twice a month. 
After completing some of the vampire questline, you get an item called the Draken's Medallion, a very useful item for teleporting around Mauritania, but previously the charges were limited on this and you had to go to Bird de Rot and dip it in the pool of blood to recharge it. Now luckily there's a way you can recharge it almost infinitely and that is by using congealed blood on it. Each congealed blood consists of a teleport, meaning that you don't really ever need to recharge it again as long as you store up lots of it. Also another little tip is that if you're using this amulet within in Mauritania itself, it doesn't consume a charge. If you've been doing a Slayer task and you've been using an aggression pot, it can be really annoying to teleport to Morvran to get your next task. However, a really clear and easy solution to this is to use a cup of tea. What this does is it clears your aggression timer completely, leaving you free to get a new task. Now, something else you can do is get a heated tea flask, which has unlimited tea and makes things a little bit easier. A really awesome feature of the Elite Dungeon Chests are that they allow you to teleport to each of the dungeons you've completed before. So, I can teleport from the Shadow Reef to the Dragonkin Laboratory or the Temple of Amanishi. If you don't want to attune one of your portals to go to these dungeons, this can be a nice way to save some money. Speaking of elite dungeons, if you have a lot of lucky charms from one specific dungeon and want to use it on another one, what you can do is you can easily convert it between the three, making your life a lot easier. For example, if I want to convert these Amanishi ones to Dragonkin Laboratory, I can do so with a few clicks. If you're going to try and complete Livid Farm, I recommend you don't and give you an alternative which will save you a shit ton of time. Now first of all, the daily merchant sometimes has a livid plant in the store which can really speed things up for you so make sure you get it every time it's available. Next up is something you can do called farming contracts in the farming guild that sometimes reward a livid plant and this is very much highly recommended because it doesn't take you much time and you'll get the livid plant and complete all your spells a lot quicker. If you need a bunch of Zamorak components for Impatient Perk, I highly recommend that you actually don't buy Zamorak armor and level it to disassemble it, but instead buy Zamorak Milners. The same can be said for Saradomin components and Saradomin Milners, but what this ends up being is significantly cheaper per component than actually leveling up the armor, and you'll save a bunch of time doing so as well, as all you need to do is just go to the GE and buy a bunch of them and then disassemble them. Another awesome way to get some really cool God Wars Dungeon components for absolutely free is to kill some spiritual warriors in your player owned dungeon. These drop war priest pieces which can be disassembled for those components and as of a recent update, you will now get these at an increased drop rate even if you didn't complete the world event 1. Speaking of component farming, I know a lot of you love your scavenging 4 and a really awesome way to get components is to kill corpse spiders with them. My friend Mikeu has a guide, but this place can be really crowded. A really good alternative is just a couple of rooms down, and you can kill the skeletons here for almost the same kills per hour, but this area is almost deserted at all times, so go ahead and enjoy this. Normally in most banks you probably have a massive amount of gizmos cluttering it up and taking a lot of space. Now a really cool item that can help you here is a gizmo bag, an item that can be made with invention itself and has a small, medium and large variant. Now I recommend making this and storing all the useful gizmos you want in here, this will help you save some space in the bank and make things a lot clearer. Something I found really annoying when doing combat was my inventory being spammed full of spirit gems and not being able to destroy them very easily. Now luckily there is a solution for this and it's the cheeky little red guy called the Charming Imp. If you go to your Charming Imp settings, you can actually choose to destroy the spirit gems so they don't clutter your inventory. If you have a little Slayer or Reaper assignment bar on your screen, what you could do is right click it and switch it around to either or. You can actually also open the collection logs from here which is very very simple and you can expand it to see some more details like slayer points or reaper points you currently have. This saves you a lot of time from navigating in menus and is something very useful to know in the future. If you go to settings then gameplay then scroll down to slayer, here you will see a lot of options for your reaper assignments. 
Firstly, you can choose if you want to have group assignments enabled or not, and if you do choose to do so, you will get some more Reaper points. So this might be something that you guys might want to consider, given the massive cost of Hydrixes at the moment. Similarly, you can turn on larger assignments and you get some more points that way as well. As you guys know, bank space and presets are very expensive. So one thing you could do to save money is actually wait around for a sale. Now when these sales come along, they are discounted quite heavily and you can get them from a discounted price. It is really annoying waiting for it and I hate advertising microtransactions, but if you are going to do it, waiting around might save you a few quid in the future. After you've completed the elven tasks, you get access to the Tyranwin Quiver, but previously you could only get one version of the Quiver dependent on what task you've done. Now you can actually get access to all four of them, so if you go to Ellen and ask her for them, you can actually get access to the tier 4, tier 3, tier 2 and tier 1. Now this could be pretty useful if you want to have some extra prayer bonus when switching around your bolts. A really useful forgotten about item is the one called Expensive Spices. Now you get this after completing the quest Let Them Eat Pie and what it does is it boosts the amount of HP healed from every bite of food you take by 50 HP. Now this can be very nice if you have something like Blubbers which have three separate bites raising the total amount of HP healed from a Blubber from 750 to 900. The Resourceful Aura is an aura which has long been forgotten. It costs 23,000 loyalty points from Solomon's general store and people don't really use it, but it does have some very nice niche uses. Firstly is Sandstone. Now if you're mining Sandstone for your daily Ooglock flasks or if you're saving up for a blessed flask, this is a godsend because activating it gives you 10% additional Sandstone and this actually stacks with the Honed perk from Invention which also gives you an additional chance to get a Sandstone. So overall, you're looking at around 20% additional Sandstone by utilizing these two things. Now another really awesome use of this aura is for iron men and material caches. The aura will really help out because it gives you a 10% chance that the cache won't deplete when it was initially meant to deplete. Next up, if you're training Slayer, the likelihood is that you're going to get a lot of softened and dungeon tasks. Now, a very cool thing that you can do is use your dungeoneering tokens to buy some vitality spark enhancers. What these do is they double the amount of vital sparks that you get once you receive a drop of them from the dungeon. Now if you combine this with a full chest in the Sofanum dungeon, there is an additional 20% chance that the drops that you will receive will be doubled in the dungeon, meaning that this will stack on top of this, meaning that you can get a massive amount of vital sparks if you're going to be training Slayer this way. The area loot system is a very nice way of picking up a lot of things in one go. Now normally people just click on something on the ground and then you can open the interface. But another way to open the interface is by going onto your drop tab and clicking this button here. This might be a bit more convenient in PVM. However, there is an even better way of doing this. If you go on settings and then control and scroll down a bit, you can actually keybind a key to open up this interface and it makes it so easy to do. Just press that button and if you want to loot, press the space bar, Bob's your uncle. If you're planning on going to the wilderness, I highly recommend you do these following options. Firstly, click on the settings, then go to gameplay, then go to attack options. As you can see at the top, there is now a player attack option. If you so wish, you can now change this from left click to hidden or right click, meaning it will be a lot harder for you to get skull tricked. Sadly, there are a lot of people that try and skull trick people out there, and this gives you an extra layer of protection, so hopefully you'll use it. Speaking of surviving in the wilderness, the next tip is pretty essential if you're being chased around. So, if you've been teleblocked, unfortunately you won't be able to tele. But, if you build to 100% adrenaline and use the immortality ability and then die, not only will you be brought back to life, but the teleblock will have cleared and you are free to teleport. Now this is pretty overpowered at the moment and it gets even better if you bring an adrenaline potion there with you meaning that you only need 75% Adren, and then you can Adren pop, and then Immortality. For the final part of this video, we're going to be going over a few GE tips and tricks. First off, if you click on the Buy Office screen, and then click on an item in your inventory, for example here, I've got a Saradome in Brew, it gives you the option to buy it straight away. Now if you go back to the main screen, you'll see this little arrow on the top right. If you click that, you can actually click Collect and repeat the offer. 
Now, when you're buying an item, if it's an item that you buy a lot, like for example, the Sour Diamond Brew, you can click the star on the top right and this will add it to your favorites. Then you can go on the favorites tab and then just click on it again to repeat the purchase, making it a lot easier for the next time you do this. Now, if you put in an offer, instead of canceling it and then re-putting it in, what you could do is click this button here and then click edit the offer. What this will do, it will bring up the same details that you've loaded and you can easily change the prices. Well guys, that was a monstrous video to make. It took me ages to find all those tips and tricks. And this is only part one. There will be a part two coming out very shortly, so hopefully you guys look forward to that. But if it did help you, let me know down below, because that really does mean everything to me. And if you guys would do me the honor of joining my Discord, I'd absolutely love to have you there. We can talk, share some thoughts, etc, etc. I also stream almost every weekday on twitch.tv slash rs underscore rav. So it'd be a pleasure to have you there as well. But for now, guys, please take care. It's been an absolute pleasure.